Welcome to the Together for Good podcast, a podcast specifically designed to inspire, challenge, and uplift you during your daily walk of faith. Today's episode, I'm happy to report, is another entry into our series on faith and daily life. We had a little bit of a break here as I was trying to line up some interviews. Truth be told, we're probably going to have a break again as I try and line people up for these conversations. But as I find them, I will bring them to you and be happy to post it. Uh, This conversation is with Jeff Liljegren. Jeff is a member here at Bethany along with his wife and their three awesome kids. And Jeff, as we'll hear in his story, uh, started out in one career and recently, during the pandemic, made a shift into a different line. And his life of faith, as you'll hear, is just a big part of this entire story. It was an awesome conversation. I really appreciate Jeff uh, for coming on and and sharing all of this with us. I think you're going to really enjoy it. So here it is, another installment as we think about the ways that our life of work, the things that we do every day, connects to our life of faith. And we get to hear Jeff Liljegren's story as it all connects. I hope you enjoy. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Together for Good podcast. I have on the line with me Jeff Liljegren. He is a member of Bethany. And this is a part of these interviews we've been doing about faith and daily life. And I wanted to bring Jeff on because he's got a really interesting story about a career shift he went through recently. But first, uh, Jeff, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Nate. It's a pleasure. And uh, I feel just uh, very honored and and maybe a little humbled to be even asked to do this. So it's cool to be here. Thank you. No, you're you're a great person with a big heart, Jeff. And I'm excited uh, to share some of your story with the wider audience here. So this, as I understand it, you were originally trained trained, and you know, went to school and earned a degree in landscape architecture. And then that kind of progressed and you worked as an urban designer, urban planner. Can you just tell us a little bit about you know, some of your training and some of the things that you were doing? Because those are probably degrees and titles that people aren't necessarily familiar with. Yeah, sure. So uh, like uh, a lot of creative titles and career paths that people go down. I'll just say this real quickly that uh, it was it, many people that get into the, into especially landscape architecture. Um, it's a meandering path. Um, <laughs> okay. I was just a creative kid. Uh, I liked to draw a ton as I, when I was younger. Uh, I also was in a family of professionals, mostly attorneys. And okay. so it was, and my mother was a, a director of, of choir uh, in her church. And so, Um, there was pressed upon us to go for a profession and my mother obviously wanted to probably, well, not obviously, but, um, she wanted me to be a pastor and, um, I, um, it never, I I guess the quickest and easiest way to say that is I just never felt like I was being called to do that specific thing. Okay. And, uh, when I got through undergrad and got a random degree, (laughs) Um, I basically realized like, okay, I I felt a a need or a calling at least to choose a profession of some sort, but I wanted to be different about it. And so, um, with my schooling, I landed a gig with the city of Kansas city and I was out there for a year and a half and I met engineers and planners and, um, uh, landscape architects that are in the park department and they turned me on to, the idea of design because I came to them with skills that I learned at Mizzou uh, in the journalism school randomly uh, where I did a bunch of um, graphic design work and actually was got notoriety for it. So they're like, you could be a really great designer and you could do design wow. in space, like in, in physical space of where people are. And so I was like, huh? So I, uh, I ventured out and link landscape architecture became that, that link. And I went to grad school. I looked at a bunch of different grad schools, ended up at Minnesota in Minneapolis. And I met my wife there. She's a landscape architect still today. And um, so what does a landscape architect do? A landscape architect uh, works alongside with architects. And uh, you'll hear the word planners. You'll hear the word city planner. You'll hear the words engineer. And all those different people have all these different hats, but they work together to basically build cities and create new places out of old 
for uh, our communities. So this is different than someone who plans the landscaping in my front yard, which I do need a person for, but that might be a separate conversation. <laughs> it is. And that's a common mis, uh, uh, misconception. Okay. Yes. Yeah, but that's okay. That's totally cool. I, um, yeah, like my wife is a pro professional landscape architect. She works on master planning of, you know, uh, hospital campuses. She works on the master planning of subdivisions, which I've done a lot of myself. Wow. Um, she does a lot. She actually does more now. That's been in her past, but now she does mostly um, public parks and whatnot throughout uh, the city. Actually, she does, she does, she's got three or four in, um, in Colorado Springs. And, and then she has work around here in Denver that she does. That's amazing. Well, and so part of what we want to do, you know, like what I'm trying to pull out with these conversations is too, to like think about the links between the work that people do and how it may or may not relate to their life of faith. Yeah. And so hearing you describe this and what a landscape architect does is you really try and envision and create spaces for community Yes. Um, as a whole. And so I'm sure that there's been, you know, in I, I can even just think about how cities or suburbs have been designed over the years and how a lot of that has really shifted and changed, it seems, as people have realized, like, we can't just do the cookie cutter thing and have them all in a row because people also need spaces to get together, yes. you know, places to, where the community can gather around. Um, yes. in, uh, before we hit record here, we were talking about how church used to be that logical place. You know, yes. it was this parish model and you, you put a church there and everyone in the neighborhood went to the neighborhood church. And that's just the way that it was. Obviously, that is not how it works at all anymore. Um, but so I mean, just, thought, just, that that's go thought ahead. about at times still, but it's it's evolved over the years. Yeah. Amongst yeah, different communities. That's a good way to put it. That's a good way to put it. I, I mean, as you worked in that position, though, uh, did you feel like there was an element of your faith? Obviously, like growing up um, with your mom directing the church choir, you were probably um, had a pretty solid faith grounding for most of your life. It oh, sounds yeah. like it. Yeah. Did you feel like that work had any connection to it or was that kind of lacking? Well, I think it was, it was there in my, um, in my core belief in my motive, core motivations of getting involved in, in civic thinking that way and being able to also express my creativity that way and, and be a professional. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think as, as I evolved from, you know, I don't know if you touched on this a whole lot, Nate, but my career, my wife is still very much a landscape architect and has been one for, you know, almost 20 years now. My career evolved. I went from landscape architecture uh, to then being more of an urban designer where I spent more time thinking with cities about the future and mm -hmm. what they might do over the next 15 or 20 years. And I would create plans they call them comprehensive plans or general plans and we talk about everything you, you name it that has to do with a city or a community or a businesses that are in that group or whatever it was talked about in these plans and we would get involved in a lot of community facilitation and to me that fed um a a, a wonderful uh piece of me with an opportunity to be with the community and communicate and work with them. And so my faith played out that way in being a, a servant and helping them to facilitate and get together as a very diverse community to kind of discuss what their needs and wants are. Yeah. But, but one thing that was lacking that I always felt like was not getting there was that to me, church was always a piece of that community as you were talking about earlier and, right. and in design you know, a lot of cities and communities had what they called the commons. Like you might think of the Boston commons, right? Yeah. Or common green there. And you, if you go to any of those cities, you'll notice that those green spaces or park spaces often were anchored by not just, uh, well, they're anchored by a church a lot of times. Yeah. Today, it's anchored by civic areas and that's they kind of evolved into that. And then now the evolution has been that those green spaces anchored by, you know, retail and commercial and places to eat and drink and whatnot. And so yep. what 
what I I'll, I'll wrap this up in saying that I think what's happened is, is as our community and our society has grown and gotten more diverse and frankly, maybe, you know, admittedly more secular, mm. people still want community. They still want to connect with each other, but they've lost um, a desire to do it within maybe a faith based orientation. And then absolutely, I've seen that play out in physical design and thinking of communities like my whole career. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fascinating. And and I yeah. mean, what you're talking about, I think we all we I think we all knew this prior to the pandemic, but the pandemic kind of turned it up to eleven in terms of yeah. re- helping us recognize, like, wait, like, yeah, yeah, like a conversation on Zoom is not the same as being in the same place and, and sharing space with somebody else. And, right. and, and I think just as a whole, our communities have seen that of like, yeah, we, you need that space to be getting together with other people. Mm-hmm. Um, for, for me personally and anecdotally, the, I felt it most my first year after college. I went to a small, close-knit community school. Um, you know, like that was a real design of this smaller college that I went to. Yeah. And and then, you know, exiting out of that and moving into the professional world, I was just so lonely all the mm-hmm. time because mm-hmm. I, you know, like, w- you know, went to went to work, um, interacted with a couple of people and then went home, you know, to my apartment. And that was it. Yeah. And, and it's just so poignant for me of like, wow, I was entrenched in community for n- not even just the four years of college, but even back in high school, you know, yeah. going to a space where there were a whole bunch of other people my age and then moving into the professional world where I was you know, the youngest one in the room by 30 years, every yeah. room I stepped into, it's yeah. just a really different space. So, um, well, let's, and, and that gives us a good segue too, because, you know, we kind of touched on the pandemic there, yeah. how it's turned up this awareness of need for community. Yeah. And, and so what I want to know, you know, like, let's tell the story too. You had a career change in the midst of this pandemic, as so many people have. Yeah. So what are you doing now, Jeff? And, and how has that kind of come about? So, you know, uh, right now I've, I've, I've pivoted to uh, what I'd call a adjacent, um, profession. I'm I'm a, I'm a real estate agent now. Um, and so a lot of my thinking about, at least on the residential side of things and some on commercial and land that I learned as a planner and as a designer and what I did with entitlements and whatnot, that's, those are all Mm -hmm. rabbit holes of things. I have knowledge that allows me to step into this new realm of real estate and play a role of just helping facilitate, um, it's going to sound cold, but transactions for people. Mm -hmm. uh, But they're not just, you know, if we think about it from a commercial or land standpoint, yes, it is transactional and whatnot, but what I really like is that I'm, I'm really focusing on more residential and okay. what that's helping me to do is really uh, focus on my neighborhood and wanting to be a part of a neighborhood um, focus, which mm-hmm. leads to my faith, you know, and my, my sense of needing to play a role of community and, and cultivating community. Yeah. Well said. Well, and t- I mean, I'm sure, it's also this ability to help people find a home. If you're in yeah. the residential space of things, yeah. it's, you know, helping those people find a place where, you know, th- their families will gather around meals where they might, you know, if they're people of faith where they're praying together, yeah. um, you know, all of those life milestones are happening. I can see that having like a deeply spiritual component to it in a lot of ways yeah i mean talk to us more i mean i I know that you're pretty new as well when did you uh, officially kind of start as a real estate individual yeah so i'm i am like full time since probably august okay okay so it's it's pretty new but um, i've been making the transition since april of this last year and, you know, maybe we can focus on that a little bit about why that transition played out. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. Go um, ahead. Yeah. So, um, you know, I was probably 15 years into my career and as a as a designer and a planner and doing all that kind of consultant work. And it was, um, you know, the 
one thing with that kind of work, especially if you're on the private side and you're working with developers more so than say maybe the public side, um, that whole industry is impacted greatly on a regular basis by the market. And so um, the market, as you may recall, if you pay attention <laughs> to that stuff, plummeted uh, in March of 2020. Yes. And right as that plummeted, uh, the firm that I was a part of, um, the design firm I was a part of, they um, they had gone through some trials and tribulations that affected them financially in the fall and winter of 2019. And then all of a sudden this came also. And so when that happened, you know, uh, I have all the full respect for that, for this place. And they gave me a wonderful place to be for four years. Uh, but they had to make some decisions because they are running a business and that business has to cash flow. Yeah. And um, they, uh, when, when I came on board, I had a unique opportunity there to kind of try and start something new with them. They were more of, a, as I said, an entitlements and master planning of community, residential communities uh, focused group. And they work with developers a lot. Mm -hmm. And I came on board to try and maybe build a new wing of community uh, engagement and public focused work. And you know, it's unfortunate, but in the world of business, a lot of times that stuff doesn't blend well together. And when you've got to have a, a, a business that you can expect to run well and be predictable, you have to kind of keep your scope narrow. And um, so all of that to say that in March, um, they decided they needed to course correct some things for themselves to keep their business um, viable and they laid off about 20 people and I just happened to be a part of that so that happened right and that was hard yeah uh, and then I took time uh, over this last 20 months to try to make an adjustment back to the public side and then you know we have this whole other narrative about you know um, Black Lives Matter the pandemic um we have yeah, there's a, a lot going on in the world oh my gosh uh the whole notions of what's happening with gender identity and everything else and uh you have a political shift uh with the administration and so i i don't i don't like to get political but unfortunately it's a part of what i was involved in for many years i was mm. just in the political arena and so all these things are happening and the world is changing and they're making adjustments. And I just found myself in a spot where um, I was marketing myself and the markets that I was talking to were saying, Jeff, you're incredible and you have all these amazing skills, but what what's needed right now is not necessarily what you're offering and so we need to turn and look elsewhere and okay. and so i had to say i had to basically come to terms with that and accept that and so i sat down you know i got an offer to take an opportunity in the western slope in colorado and it would have been awesome for a 25 or 30 year old guy with no kids or a wife <laughs> <laughs> it would have been awesome i would have been in probably buena vista and i could have been starting at my own thing uh, with Chafee County and I had to pass it because um, my wife uh, is doing an incredible thing in her work and my three kids are grounded here in Southeast Denver and I wasn't about to uproot all that. So, um, so talk to us too about, I mean, just like as a, you know, what were your conversations with God like at, at that point in time, you know, like well, what, you know, it's gotta my, be really difficult and really frustrating. Yeah, no, and I know that we're we're getting short on time, and that and you're getting to the meat of the question. So the so, what was my conversations with God? Well, my conversations were with God were pretty intense because I also had back <laughs> surgery in the That's middle. Right. of oh, I back. forgot about. Oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> I had sciatica, and I had to go underneath the knife, and I was in, I was out for like three weeks in the middle of the summer this last year in 2020 at least, and so you know, one just being able to have just a walk 
was a blessing when I was able to muster up the energy to do it and to get over the pain. And those walks were walks with God, no question. And I would mm. walk on the, I would walk at Bible park, uh, you know, and try to get an out a mile in or two miles in or three miles in. And many times I was either talking to the birds and <laughs> thinking of them as manifestations of God or, or maybe Jesus. Yeah. And, you know, I would think of God above me and Jesus walking next to me with his armor on my shoulder. And I just, I just kept having these conversations and those conversations weren't always about me. Sometimes they're about my family members that I care about, just trying to get my mind off my own stuff. And it, a lot, there was just a lot there, <laughs> more than we can handle in the last uh, two <laughs> minutes of this podcast. <laughs> No, well, and we before we do anything else, we got to give your wife a shout out for holding everything together while you were. You know, oh my! Oh my <laughs> gosh! And all that, right? <laughs> yeah, my wife Carrie, she is the pillar of this family. I mean, <laughs> my gosh, uh, without her, and uh, wow, uh, my yeah, uh, I I am I, everything I am today, right now, and will be probably in the future. I will give and give to her for sure. So as you made this shift now and thanks for giving us the background i do think that's an interesting piece of information just with all of this yeah it's and, i know i'd get i, I go off in tangents <laughs> no no but it, but what but you're also telling and painting a really great picture through all of this what i love is just the way that that god is kind of leading and pulling you in different places and, and it goes yeah. all the way back to what you were talking about right like you were a kid who loved to draw yeah. And because of that, they're like, hey, you should do graphic design. And then because yeah. of that, they're like, hey, you should do landscape architecture. Yes. You know, like it just kind of evolves and changes and pulls in different ways. And even yeah. as you said, right now you're in real estate, but that's an adjacent industry to Correct. what you were doing before. Right. It's not exactly, I'm sure, at all of what you ever envisioned or how you had lined it up carefully. Right. We love to do that. Of like right. We have our very careful plans. And then God's like, yeah, but let's twist this a little <laughs> bit. How about over here? Yeah. So talk to us now. I mean, in these since August. So what? Six months now, five months now. Um, no, three months now. Got yeah, it. <laughs> three months. Yeah, 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 three months. <laughs> um, but what uh, you know, like how have you felt um, this sense of like living out your faith in this real estate setting? You touched on it a little bit, but I want to give you more opportunity maybe to just talk about or, or tell a story about something that's happened in your short time in this career that you feel like is a connection point there. Well, I chose it for um, one major reason I chose it was that I needed one of us needed to be available as a parent more often with our kids. Sure. Because my having my wife and I both in that other career, uh, it's very um, deadline driven and um, your your clients need what they need and they need them yesterday. And you got to give as much time as you possibly can. And the 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 trade off of that is a lack of focus on on your family and that is something i didn't want to trade anymore and so this gave me some flexibility that way yeah and it's it, it, more so than i realized already i've been able to so i'm able to pick my kids up at 4 30 i'm able to t drop them off at school at 8 30. uh you know my former life i was at work at eight and i didn't leave till 5 36 o'clock at night sometimes i didn't leave till eight o'clock at night Mm -hmm. That was true with my wife and I, and we'd have to trade those off. And that's, that's no good. That's no, not a good way to raise three children, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, now I can on Wednesdays come to the school at four 30 and bring them over to church and they get to be in choir. I get to be in choir. Oh my gosh. My mother, <laughs> oh my, she's so happy. <laughs> I was just talking to her yesterday about the Bach cantata that we're trying to do. And I'm like, mom, there's more notes on that page than I've ever seen. And she's like, you'll get it again. You'll get back to it. But she, she's very happy about it. So. That's awesome. I mean, she wanted you to be a pastor, but she'll take this, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. So my, it, I, I'm able to just, I'm able to live my faith more intentionally again. And that's important. And then, you know, as far as like the career goes, you know, I'm just out talking to people every day. Like before we started this, I, I was door knocking and, and people are like, oh, you're door knocking. Oh, we, 
we love it when people <laughs> I'm like, I know, but I'm doing it in my neighborhood and I'm introducing myself to folks and I'm and I realize that there are people out there that would rather talk to me than than um somebody that keeps slamming their mailbox with a thousand postcards and um yeah. both them on the phone and whatnot. So and the walking allows me to, you know, exercise and work on my back. So it's it's a win-win in a lot of ways. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, ultimately what you're doing with all of this, right? Like e even in the urban design space, it is, it is a sense of building community and what the totally. scriptures show us again and again, is just that God is in the business of community, you know, like God sends Jesus to earth in order to be in community with us. And then, you know, Jesus says things like where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there also, you know, like so much of it yeah. has always been about bringing people together, sharing life together, building relationships I just think there's something deeply holy about that, about literally the work that you're doing in creating community for people, helping them find a home um, that I hope, you know, that we don't affirm enough. We, we just gloss over and it's like, no, no, that's just life. But no, life is deeply holy and spiritual and sacred if we just have the eyes to look for it. So, um, Jeff, any closing thoughts for us uh, as we tie all of this up? Anything more that you wanted to make sure you got a chance to say before we conclude here? I'll just end with with this, and I wish we were not because I think I'm beautiful, but I do wish that we were on camera for a second. Because what I'm doing right now is I've got my fingers and hands together, and I'm doing this thing that was this thing I used to do as a kid, and it was, you know, you got your thumbs. You say these are the doors, oh. <laughs> and this is the steeple, <laughs> and you open them up, and here are all the people, and that I love is it. it. That is it right there, my friend. That is that's that's what yeah, church to life and faith. That's what it's all about. Well done. Yeah, well, well, I'll get a picture of you doing that. We'll put it on the uh, on the show notes for everyone. Uh, Jeff, uh, thanks for sharing your story with us, honestly. And um, I'm just so glad to hear of how God has led you through all of this. I'm sure it was an extremely difficult 2020 for you and the family. Um, but glad to hear you're largely on the other side of all of this. And thanks so much for sharing your story and your time with us today. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, my story is a humble one compared to many. I know that I've had, had it worse over the last uh, 24 months. So um, thank you. Yeah. And you, dear listeners, thanks for taking the time to listen to all this. We always appreciate your support. Stay in peace, everyone.